Welcome to the service of the Word at St. Paul Luther Church East Lansing this 21st Sunday after Pentecost. Today's gospel starts with disciples observing over who will be closest to Jesus, leading to Jesus teaching his followers about God's take on importance and power. Here Jesus makes it explicit that the reversal of value in God's community is a direct challenge to the values of the dominant culture where wielding power over others is what makes you great. We pray your kingdom come. We are praying for an end to tyranny and oppression. We pray this gather around the cross, a sign of great shame, transformed to be the sign of great honor and service. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who teaches his life, whose presence and sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we've gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and grief. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Let us by your love to love our neighbors and our love ourselves. Amen. All who sin and have fallen short of the glory of God by the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. <laughs> the gathering song to be your presence. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Also with you. The Kyrie. Let us pray. Sovereign God, you turn your greatness into goodness for all the peoples on earth. Shape us into willing servants of your kingdom and make us desire always and only your will through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now God speaks to us in scripture, reading, and song. The first reading today is from Isaiah, chapter 53, verses 4 through 12. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth, like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a person 
uh, by a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgressions of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich. Although he had done no violence, there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him, the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish, he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is Psalm 91, verses 9 through 16. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation, no, no evil, evil will befall you, you nor shall affliction come near your dwelling. For God will give the angels charge over you to guard you in all your ways. Upon their hands, hands and bear you up, on you, lest you strike your foot against the stone. You will tread upon the lion, cub, and viper. You will trample down the lion and the serpent. I will deliver Look those, those who cling to me. To me. I will uphold them, them because they know my name. name. They will call me, and I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. With long life will I satisfy them and show them my salvation. The second reading is from the book of Hebrews, chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is subject to weakness, and because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins as well as for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also, Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. As he says also in, an, in a, another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designed by God, a high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, you want us to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand, the other at your left in glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you're asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. And Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized, you'll be baptized. 
But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it's for those to whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry and with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as the rulers lorded over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. It's not so among you, but whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be saved, excuse me, for the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for money. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace of God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. When Jesus calls the twelve men to be his apostles, he gives James and John, the sons of Zebedee, the name Bonarges, which means sons of thunder. We don't know really why Jesus gave them that name, but it seems fitting later on. Remember when Jesus and the disciples were traveling through Samaria, on their way to Jerusalem when they ran into a challenge. There was a prejudice between the Samaritans and the Israelites, and when Jesus attempts to find accommodations for the night, he was met with opposition from the villagers simply because he was going to Jerusalem. When the disciples James and John saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call fire down from heaven to destroy them? Well, that sounds pretty much like they're full of thunder. But you have to ask yourself, is that how Jesus likes to deal with people? Is that how he has a solution? Of course, Jesus' disciples kept on going. They found accommodations. Of course, you realize this is not the first time in Jesus' life where there was trouble finding accommodations. Of course, we hope what they found was not in a stable. James and John were two of Jesus' closest friends who, along with Peter, were the inner circle, the intimate disciples, and they were with Jesus and Peter when Jesus was transfigured. They were with Jesus when he fed thousands of people more than once with a small amount of food, when he healed a boy who was possessed by a demon. And of course, he had just predicted his death for the third time before this. Even though they were in the midst of the ministry, they did not understand what Jesus was saying. He was not going to be a conquering king. His kingdom was not an earthly kingdom. The kind of Messiah Jesus was going to be, the, the kind Old Testament prophets predicted. They thought if Jesus were going to establish an earthly kingdom that would free Israel from the conquering Roman oppression. And if so, they'd like to serve as his right and left hand. Of course, as we know, Jesus' kingdom is not centered in palaces, and there's no thrones, but rather exists in the hearts and minds of his followers. James and John's were looking to be great, and he told them they could be great. But the true greatness in God's kingdom comes in serving others. In our society, greatness is judged by high personal achievement. The way to get ahead in Christ's kingdom is through service to others. Their motives of being the greatest would hamper, not help them to achieve this status. Those who want to be the greatest are the servant, and those that are first are the slave to all. As Peter tells us in 1 Peter 5, 1, 4. Now an elder myself, I'm a witness of the suffering Christ, as well as one who shared in the glory to be revealed. I exhort the elders among you to tend the flock of God that is in your charge, exercise the oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly, as God would have you do it. Not for sort of gain, but, eager, um, but eagerly. Do not lord it over those in your charge to be examples of the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you win the crown of glory that never fades away. That's how you win the cloud of glory, the crown of glory. See, Jesus died for our sins, which paid for our sins, since we could not pay for our sins ourselves. We were released from slavery to sin by his death. It wasn't Jesus' life and power that saved them from the Romans. 
as the other apostle Peter, which part of this inner circle said, you know that you're ransomed in feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defeat or blemish. So as we look at the rest of their history, G James is the first apostle to be killed. John, his youngest brother, wrote in epistles in 1 John where the word love and, it, and things related to love are spoken 40 times. When he first met Jesus, he was one of the Monarchies, but after walking with Jesus for the rest of his life, the Son of Thunder heard a new nickname, the Apostle of Love. Which, my friends, just goes to show you that the gospel transforms. Amen. Now for the hymn of the day. Vault of grace, here the love of Christ shall end divisions. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where prophets speak and words are strong and true where all God's children dare to seek to dream God's dream anew hear the cross shall stand as witness and a symbol of God's grace as one we claim the faith of Jesus, all are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where love is found in water. Share in Christ the feast that frees us. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where all be our name dares our songs and heard and loved and treasured taught and claimed as words within the word built of tears and cries and laughter prayers of faith and songs of grace let us house proclaim from Floor to rafter, all are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. 
Let us share our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Set free from sin and death and nourished by the word of truth, we join in prayer for all of God's creation. Holy One, for the gift of the church handed down through the ages and for all who carry on the servant ministry of Jesus, we praise you. Send your Holy Spirit upon all who are discerning calls to ministry and in its many forms and equip them with your gifts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creating one for the lush and abundant habitat you provide for all your creatures, we praise you. Provide healing for the earth so that waterfowl, reptiles, wild horses, dolphins, and all living things flourish as you intend. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Suffering one for all who work toward peace and who lead nations with a servant's heart, we praise you. Bring justice for all who suffer violence, persecution, discrimination, hunger, poverty, and homelessness, and create places of refuge for all people. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Protecting one, watch over those serving in our armed forces. Assure them of your never failing strength. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Merciful one, for all who do the work of healing in mind, body, and spirit, we praise you. Surround and comfort all who struggle with depression, anxiety, cancer, diabetes, dementia, or any illness, that all may be healed. We pray especially for those we silently lift before you now. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Sustaining one for all who volunteer for the vitality of this congregation, we praise you. Strengthen and encourage greeters, ushers, office volunteers, bakers, counters, committee and group leaders, teachers, students, evangelists, singers, builders, nurturers, and all who serve with generous hearts. We especially lift up to you, presiding Bishop Elizabeth, our Synod Bishop Craig and Pastor Carl. We ask that you be with their respective staffs as they live out their callings to serve. As we are called to be one, even as Jesus and the Father are one, be with the leaders and the congregation of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Holland. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Risen one. We thank you for those who have shaped your church and shared your gospel. Through the witness of your saints, continue to inspire us with hope until we all are gathered at your eternal feast. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Confident that you hear us, O God, we boldly place our prayers into your hands through Jesus Christ, our truth and life. The peace of Christ be with you always. The sure God's peace. Peace. God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept these gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him our thanks and praise. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it is not a temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Amen. Amen. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. Now for the sending hymn, Lord, dismiss us with your blessing. Fill our hearts with joy and peace. Let us see your love possessing triumph in redeeming grace. Oh, refresh us, oh, refresh us, traveling through this wilderness. Thanks we give and adoration for your gospel's joyful sound. May the fruits of your salvation in our hearts and lives abound. Ever faithful, ever faithful to your truth may we be found. Savior, when your love shall call us from our struggling pilgrim way. Let no fear of death upon us, let your summons to obey. May we ever, may we ever reign with you in endless day. Dwells in you. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.